one? Yep. So today we are going to talk about polynomial graphs and expressions. So you're going to title your paper polynomial graphs and expressions. Okay, so we're going to talk about the characteristics. We're going to identify the degree, the leading term, the constant. We're going to identify max, mins of the graph. Okay, this is all stuff that you learned back in accelerated or algebra or algebra one. Polynomial graphs and expressions. Polynomial graphs and expressions. Okay, which one doesn't belong? Stack the three expressions that belong together. Take a moment, look at the expressions. You don't have to write these down. I just want you to tell me which ones belong together. Somebody raise their hand and tell me. Okay, Ellen, go ahead. Tell me what, which ones belong together. Yep. Which one doesn't belong? Let's go there. The blue one doesn't belong. Purple one doesn't belong. Why? Okay, so it's got to fractionize an exponent, right? All right, cool. That's it. That's all I needed. Okay, speaking of polynomials, a polynomial is a function or expression given by a sum of terms, each of which is a constant times a whole number power of x. The coefficient is the constant a variable is multiplied by. Okay, so coefficient, we know that that's a number chilling out front. And then the constant term is going to be at the end. Degree is going to be the exponent. So what I want you to write down is the definition of polynomial. Okay, and I'm going to write this for you. It's a function slash an expression by sum of terms. Each is a constant times x raised to an exponent. Bro, you like a movie theater. Good reach. Okay. Now, coefficient is the number that's going to be chilling out front. So this is how I would take notes. I would put coefficient out front in front of the X. The degree is going to go up here as the exponent. And then you're always going to say plus your constant filling out here. And I'll give you a second to write that down. So um, really quick, with the highest degree, you're looking for the number that is the biggest um, degree. So for instance, I'm here at the bottom, we got this x squared plus three x plus one. The highest degree would be two, the constant would be one, and the coefficients would be like one or three. Okay, so I, I mean, this is stuff you kind of already know. Um, it's just throw back to vocab. Now, we are going to talk about quadratics and cubics. Okay, cubics are the one to the third power. Quadratics are the one to the second power. If you did not know that, I would write that down. Quadratics is anything that is x squared. Cubics are x to the third. Okay, with quadratics, you're either going to have one minimum or one maximum. With cubics, you're going to have one maximum, one minimum. And these are going to be called relative. And we're going to talk about the difference between absolute and relative in just a second. Easy things that are quartic. So we got x to the fourth power that are quartic. Um, really quick, you've got the quadratics that look like a u. And it's either going to be upside down or up, right? You got cubics that look like this, where you're going, or 
Okay. Yep. Or you got cortex that are going to be like a W almost. That's normally what they look like. And they can be facing upwards or downward. Looks like a little bird. Okay. Cortex is that X to the fourth power. So we got this polynomial. And we already talked about the leading coefficient. The leading coefficient is the guy that has the highest term. And it's the term that's out front. Highest degree is going to be that exponent. Okay, so if it asks for the leading coefficient, that means it's got the highest exponent and it's chilling out front. So in this example right here, we got four. Okay. Now, if the leading coefficient is positive, the graph will rise on the right as x approaches positive infinity. You're writing this part down. If the leading coefficient is negative, the graph will fall on the right as x approaches infinity. If you are a visual person, you can sketch these graphs or you can write these words out, whatever helps you on your notes. So, polynomials have extrema. Okay, so just a reminder, max and min, there's another word for that. It's called extrema, okay? Max, maximums and minimums oh. are also called extrema. Okay, so I would write that down if you did not know that, because I know some teachers don't use that term. Max and min are writing math, are extrema, okay? Now, there is a difference between absolute and relative. Let's talk about it. Back in biology or chemistry or whatever science class you've taken last, what did the word absolute zero mean? Zero. What do you mean? What couldn't get lowered? It's as cold as it possibly gets, right? Like people lose limbs, right? Like it gets, it's cold, okay? So when we say absolute, either maximum or minimum, that's as far as it possibly can go. So for instance, right here, this dot is an absolute max. This dot down here is an absolute min. Nothing goes past those two points. Does that make sense? Now, relative means that, you know, it went up and then went back down, but it's not the absolute highest point, right? So relative is going to be like in here. We got relative maxes right here and a relative min right here. Go ahead and take a second if you want to draw that diagram on your paper. Okay, so look at the lovely graph on the board. Select all points where relative minimum values occur on the graph of a polynomial function. Take a moment, relative minimum. Why are y'all saying A and C? Okay, and remember, it's a relative, okay, relative minimum. Oh, minimum. Okay, so what's the, what's, what's the down B? And then, okay, cool. That's it, that's it, that's it. That's it. We're done. Okay, cool. Does that make sense? It's like the part of the roller coaster where you're like, your stomach kind of like drops into like, you know how your stomach drops? Yeah. That's a relative minimum. It's like, oh no. Right? Like, yeah. Okay, just me. Okay. All right, take a moment. Select all true statements. So read these statements over. Select all true statements. So take a moment. All right. So is there an absolute minimum? No. Because it keeps going on forever, right? Yeah, but, okay. so, so there so is there no absolute minimum? Yes, there there is no absolute minimum. No, there is no absolute yeah, no, no. that's a little hard to explain. Okay. Is there there is no absolute maximum? Is that a true statement? No. Yes. No, that's false. Because we see D is right here, right? It doesn't go any higher than D. And it doesn't go any higher than D. Okay. Two real roots. Real roots, let's have this conversation. That's the same thing as saying X intercepts. Roots are the same thing as saying X intercepts. So are there two real roots? Yes, okay. Relative max roots are X intercepts. 
Okay, so roots are talking about like if we solve something out and it's asking for real root across the x-axis. Okay, relative maximum. Is B a relative maximum? Yeah. Is B a relative maximum? No, what is it? There we go. C is a relative minimum. Yes. F is an absolute minimum. No, because it keeps going on forever. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> this is a quadratic polynomial. No, what would a quadratic look like? Like a U. This looks like a kind of W looking thing, which is going to be quartic, right? Okay. That was beautiful. Okay. All right, so you are going to, all right, shh, shh, ready? Um, you are going to go to actually pull out this uh, Desmos activity. Yeah, I know, I'm sorry, I suck, it's fine. Okay, so you're gonna go to slide 16 and I want you to sort these, okay? You gotta be able to identify the graph. So you're sorting, hey, 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 yo, yo, yo. You are sorting the graph with the equation. Okay, because you're going to be asked to do that. Once you finish that, um, I want you to answer these questions. What patterns did you notice? Which equations were challenging to match? Okay, and then go ahead and fill out slides 18 through 22. Okay, so oh, you're doing 16 through 22. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes. We're going to talk about it, and then we'll kind of go from there. Just as a side note, when you're doing this, you can do um, control minus and you can zoom out just a little bit so you can get all those cards in there. Um, this is what, shh, no. Okay, so this is what I got going on right now. Um, there we go. Okay. So I put A and D together. I put F and E together. Uh, A and C together. D, e, yeah, and it's equation B. Graph C, graph G, and equation F. The only ones that I haven't done are the x to the third or x to the fifth. x to the fifth looks a lot like x to the third, so you kind of have to be careful on that one. Okay. It has like a what? Okay, so which one would it be? Okay, so graph B, equation G. Okay. And then what about these? These are similar. How do we tell the difference? Um, How could you check? Desmos graphing Bro, Desmos graphing calculator is going to carry for you. Okay. So throw those in Desmos graphing calculator to see which one it is. Okay. Um, last thing, don't forget. Uh, you haven't already finished 18 through 22 it definitely is a good idea to kind of go through those because you will have a question like this don't forget your delta map it shows with e. there you go okay 